Well, I can just go ahead and tell this is Marilyn Eckert and I'm down in Crytersville and she's generously offered us many things from the old Eckert farm, Henry and Catherine Eckert farm and she's going to tell us about a few of these uh, items as we get them packed up. So what do you have there, uh, Marilyn? Um, well, as a kid, I remember this filled with milk from the cows. I'm I, sorry, could, could I, you repeat that one, sir? I'm sure I'm going to miss this. These, these items? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Excuse me, here comes the tears. Okay, well that's fine, um, that's no problem. I don't know why, but I was seemed to be the one that valued that everything from that farm. I, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, it just, maybe because I kept it, I could I couldn't get rid of it, and yet I did get rid of a lot, thinking of but kept it in the family. Grandpa Henry was his name. His first wife died. And after she died, and that was one daughter, after she died and he married Catherine, then they had more girls. Hmm. And uh, of course they're all gone now. But not that many years, some of them. Now I'm in the next generation, the children of them. And I guess that's why I'm time to give up my treasures. Mm -hmm. And uh, Well, we sure appreciate it. We uh, do our best to take good care of them and make it so people can enjoy and learn about your farm in Port Oneida for many years to come. Yes. Oh, do you want me to go on? Sure. Uh, uh, of course, Gloss, he was the only boy with five girls. And uh, he, I hear tell he just teased the living daylights out of them. And always had them running and screaming. <laughs> and I have a picture of him. Uh, down in front of the chest there when he was five years old. Um, they let the boys' hair grow until they were five and they started school. Then they cut their hair and that, that is Wallace Eckert and be about 1909 at five years old. I used to get a lot of laughs when I had company and they'd say, well, who's that nice looking girl in that picture you got hanging on the wall? And I'd say, oh, that's my dad when he was a little girl. <laughs> and they would look at me so funny. And what do you mean when he was a little girl? You'd see a strange expression on her <laughs> face. So then I'd explain to him yeah. that that was very common. And I just, <laughs> there I go again with the tears. <laughs> uh, oh, and they were happy times. Oh, the company. It seemed, that I, I know people say about their fathers and mothers, everybody loved them, but boy, my dad, Wallace, they, they couldn't get people in the church at Good Harbor Lutheran Church when he was buried. It's such a big, big funeral. It just, because everybody knew my dad. Hmm. Or the Eckerts, but dad, for some reason, that being a boy, I think, made a difference. The lady that had Cottages uh, off M22. Stebner? Was it Stebner? The, yes, I believe it was. By Lake Narada? Yes, bit. yes, I, I recognize that. Dad, and they would talk about the bottomless lake. 
It was right off M22 in that mm -hmm. area to the mm -hmm. north. Mm -hmm. And they told how different times they'd get all the rope or chains or anything they could to try and find the bottom of that. And they never could find how deep that was. And mm. that's why they called it the bottomless lake. Mm. The dugout, I don't know who did that. And I'm sure it must have been done way back when before cars but that would take our 94 or yeah 1940 chevy down that road and oh was that scary and go down there and then the lake down in there he'd fish at now hmm. and then um well audrey my sister and i and dad were going down the dugout I'm not sure what Dad went to the lake for, but he, every so often he'd go down there, I think before he went fishing, so, or maybe, no, he wouldn't have fished with us two girls, not there. Anyway, we're part way down the dugout, and that is scary as all heck. <laughs> and uh, we get to the bottom, and there happened to be a tree nearby, and Dutch jumps out of the tree in front of the car. And I mean, it was safe. We were going <laughs> slow, but scared. Oh, my sister was just <sighs> petrified. Well, he kind of liked my sister. Oh, so he was teasing? And, he jumped out yeah, of the tree to give you a start? Yeah, and we didn't know he was down there. And then oh. after coming down that steep dugout, yeah. Is that dugout still there? Yeah, yeah, it's a fun place to hike. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's just chiseled into the hillside there. Yeah. Yeah. But with the cars, those big old cars, well, some are bigger than today's cars, do, they probably don't take cars down. Anymore. No, you can't take cars down it anymore. But, mm -hmm. And the shell to store. Uh, you knew about the shell to mm -hmm. store? But you can tell me about it if you have something that you remember oh. about it. Oh, that was fun. We could go to shelters and Dad would get gas. And it had one of the old pumps that had the glass up here. And as kids, we were fascinated with this pump, of course. High tech, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you kids, you know, get away from there. And. It was a typical store, you know, with long counter, and uh, I don't remember too much about it, but we always got a piece of candy, mm. and big copper boiler, I think is what they called it. Mm -hmm. It stands about so high, you still see them around, with a lid, with a black handle, and that was filled with water on wash day, which was collected on the front porch and the rainwater was collected and then it took two people to bring it in the house and even at that they probably emptied some of the water out to carry it and then that was placed on a big huge wood stove and that's this kind of a story there because when my dad, I was there the day dad and Catherine, his mother, my grandma, he decided to tear it out because they had electricity now. And they, my mother, before she moved up there to live from Detroit, her and dad, that's where they lived, um, she wanted... <laughs> She, she wasn't going to cook on no wood stove. <laughs> well, Grandma Eckert had a stroke that day. Hmm. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> and I even took some medicine that the doctor had given me. So today, this is a reminder to me Grandma had a stroke moving all the precious items out of her home. She never knew if she was going to see him again. Hmm. <laughs> and here I am, what, 100 years later? And 
I feel the same way. And took some medicine with the doctor's blessings. So I wouldn't have a stroke today because I've had several so far. Mm. But it, it's amazing. You, know, you knew some of the people, but you think back as children and how you'd go in the parlor, which turned into a bedroom, and uh, go in there and play the organ for hours. And they could shut the door, the adults could, and let the kids play. And where the side of the organ is quite rough is where it was set in by a window and the rain came in. So one side of the organ is in very good shape. Uh, you know, everything you see is so old and there's so many memories. Mm. The cousins that came to visit, and you had to climb Tit Hill at least. Climb what? T I T. Oh. Tit Hill. Yes. And at that time, there was no vegetation on it. And of course, that's what whoever named it, it was before my generation. Um, because of the shape of it. But you had to climb that every day, at least once. And we could see Lake Michigan. I think Charlie was, I don't know if I should say this or not, was quite a drinker. Well, I think that the whole story is, is good when we're doing history, if you're willing to share. Um, you know, that was part of, part of life. We don't want a, a glo That's glossified true. That's picture. True. And um, my mother, Marie Wallace's wife, was, uh, brought us up very strict Lutheran. And uh, we didn't look down on anybody, or I didn't look at it that way. But we didn't see as much of the family that were heavy drinkers mm. or swore a lot. Mm. Uh, so I suppose that had something to do with it. When, you know, when I was a child, my folks were visiting. They probably didn't want me here in certain things that would happen. So I guess you call it prejudice. It's a dining room. Hmm. Uh, that's the room with the picture window. I felt ba kind of bad now that my father, Wallace, put in that picture window, maybe in the 50s or so, because it's out of place and I like original. Is this house that I'm in now uh, is the same. I, we purchased it because it's like the farmhouse. Mm. And we made sure and replaced all the windows with the original log from floor to ceiling windows. And Dad put in that picture window and although Grandma enjoyed it very much, I think Grandpa was dead then, but uh, they'd sit in front of it and play cards. And your grandmother made this? Well, the ladies got together, oh, okay. I think. Uh -huh. I think they had quilting bees. Yeah, but um, it was your grandmother with, was, with, with the others? Is that the generation yeah. that we're talking about? Yeah, Catherine. Uh -huh. There was a lot more quilts, but they disintegrated because they were made out of scraps of, of um, oh, velvet and any materials. They, they really were quite ugly, and I had them. And when I went to take them out after packing them and moving, and they just kind of fell apart. Are you saying that, that the quilts were ugly because they were old, or they were ugly from the start? From the start, the everyday quilts, they didn't use as a rule. I don't think the beautiful ones, mm -hmm. maybe if they had company, I don't mm -hmm. know, that's just my idea because what we used when we were kids upstairs were crappy. 
looking. They didn't have that much beautiful material. No. They probably cut up a, a nice winter coat that Grandma had or something, one of the kids, and, and uh, that's what it looked like, a lot mm -hmm. of the material, but they just take something heavy that maybe had been worn and stitched them together.